So let us explore some of the key properties of the region of convergence. So the region of convergence is often a contrasting feature. So as previously mentioned in our previous video that two different signals can have same algebraic expression in the S domain, but they would be different in terms of the region of convergence. Let us explore some of the properties and constraints on the region of convergence for various classes of signals. The first property states that the region of convergence of X of S consists of strips parallel to J omega axis in the S plane. So in the S plane, we have sigma and J omega. So this property says that the ROC would be parallel to J omega axis and not sigma. This is because you know that X of S is simply x of t that is the time domain version of the signal x of t any given time domain signal times e minus sigma t e minus j omega t dt this is from minus infinity to infinity so this should converge so if this converge and if this is integrable So we would have a Laplace transform. So in short, the integration depends on real part of S that is sigma because sigma is something which is damping it down. So since the sigma controls the integration or the convergence of Laplace transform, therefore the ROC of X of S consists of the strips parallel to J omega axis in the S plane rather than sigma. We can have an S plane which has a pole over here and but we cannot have this sort of an S plane not possible uh, the second property says that for rational Laplace transform the ROC does not contain any pole so for rational Laplace transform this means that our X of S is in terms of a fraction and say we have a pole at s equal to minus 1 this says that for rational Laplace transform the ROC does not contain any pole so the ROC is to the right of this pole and pole is not included in the ROC since if you set s equal to minus 1 over here, so this will become minus 1 plus 1 and hence x of s would approach infinity. Next, the third property suggests that if x of t is a finite duration, it is starting at t1, this is time domain x of t, and it is terminating at t2, t1 to t2. So if x of t is a finite duration and is absolutely integrable, then ROC is the entire S plane. So again in Laplace transform, we say that our x of s is an integration of x of t e minus st. So e minus st can be a decaying exponential or it can be a growing exponential. So in either case, this would be finite. So we have to find the area of this decaying exponential with the original signal in this range only. So this integration would be from T1 to T2 and we will get a value which is basically constant for all values of S. So since this is for all values of S, this is mentioned over here that if X of T is a finite duration and is absolutely integrable, this is integrable then the ROC region of convergence is the entire S plane. Let us look further with help of one example. Over here we have a finite time domain signal E minus AT which is from 0 to T. X of T is plotted over here. So in order to find a Laplace transform X of S, so we would only be interested in integrating from 0 to T. Because rest of the time x of t is equal to 0 and x of t multiplied by any other signal 
including e minus st dt would also be zero so our integration limit starts at zero and terminates at t and from here we can say e minus s plus a t dt so for zero uh, we can write this that this is equal to one over s plus a one minus s plus a t a t capital t so if we put s is equal to minus a over here so this will become so this will become one over minus a plus a so this will become zero and at the same time this e this will become minus a plus a so this will become zero and hence we would have one minus one so zero by zero which is not a number so this expression is valid for all values of s except when s is equal to minus a where it is not valid so in order to evaluate x of s at s is equal to minus a at this point we use l hopital's rule that is we set a limit and say that our s approaches minus a x of s this is equivalent to limit s tends to minus a d by ds of the numerator over the denominator so this would be equivalent to the denominator is simply one so similarly if we dif uh, differentiate a constant value with respect to s so this will become zero so we would have e minus s e times e minus a t so we can take out e minus a t because we are differentiating with respect to s and not capital t so we are left with d by d s e minus s t so the t would come so this t would be appearing over here so we have t e minus a t e minus s t so if we plug in the value of s over here so this will be t e minus a t and e plus a t so these two would be equal to one and hence we have simply t when our s is minus a so for all other values uh, we are following this expression but for s equal to minus a we are getting this result so this means that s plus a is not a pole because if it was a pole so this would mean that roc does not contain the entire s plane because roc does not include any pole so that was the justification of the third property uh, let us move to the next one so property 4 states that if x of t is right sided and for some value of s some real part which is sigma naught is in the roc that means we have an roc and this is s so this sigma naught is over here somewhere is in the roc then all values of s for which real part of s is greater than sigma naught so for another point that is sigma one will also be in the roc which is definite because this was a right sided and sigma one 
is greater than sigma naught. So what do we mean by this? So let's say this is our signal x of t, which is right sided. And from Laplace transform, we are multiplying x of t with e minus st. And s is originally sigma naught. If sigma naught was over here, right? So we are getting this curve. This would be multiplied with our x of t. But at the same time, as we move towards right, that is sigma 1 is greater than sigma naught. That is sigma 1 is greater than sigma naught. In this case, we have e minus sigma 1 t, which as we move towards right, it would have a faster convergence. So formally speaking, for right sided, real part of s is equal to sigma naught is in all c, then all values of s for which real part of s is greater than this value sigma naught will also be in the ROC. And the other way around, property 5 is for the left side signal. This was for this was for the right sided. Now it is for the left sided. That means now our S plane may be something like this. And this is our original point sigma naught. And we may have another point sigma 1. So sigma 1 is less than sigma naught. And accordingly, we would have written convergence. So the property 6 states that if x of t is two-sided, that is, it is both in positive time and also minus t, right? Approaching infinity and minus infinity. So if it is two-sided and if the line real part of s is equal to sigma naught is in the ROC, then ROC will consist of a strip in the S plane that includes the line R of a real part of S is equal to sigma naught. So what does this mean? So this is our two-sided signal X of T. So what we can do is we can chop this signal into two parts. The first part is this is T naught. Right. So we can call this as the right-sided part X R of T, which is starting at this point t naught and moving towards right so this is right sided and other one is t naught and this is moving towards the left side this is our x l of t so in our prior discussions we have mentioned that if the signal is right sided time domain signal is right sided so the roc is also right sided and if the signal is left sided so the roc is left sided if you combine these two together the roc is in this direction and for here the roc is in this direction this is the pole is simply at sigma r and this is sigma l but roc does not contain either of the poles so we would have a strip which is bounded by poles so no ROC over here and to the left side, but just in a strip. So this is what is mentioned over here, that if X of T is two-sided, and if the line real part of S is sigma naught is in the ROC, then ROC will consist of a strip in the S plane that includes the line or real part of S equal to sigma naught. If sigma naught is somewhere over here, so this would include that point. Again, let us look into it with the help of an example. So it says that find the Laplace transform of x of t e raised per minus b absolute value of t, right? So depending on the value of b, we could have two different shapes, right? The first is when the value of b is greater than zero. So if the value of b is greater than zero, so we have a function which is basically converging as the time approaches infinity or if the time approaches minus infinity. And similarly, if b is negative, so we have a, a growing function which approaches infinity as the time approaches infinity uh, or minus infinity. So x of t basically can be broken down into a function with u of t that would make it right sided plus a function which is u of minus t that would make it left sided so this is something which is done over here 
e raised to power minus b t u of t plus e raised to power b t u of minus t and from example 1 and 2 done previously we can find the Laplace transform of these two functions eventually we can observe that we have two pole one at plus b and another one at minus b and the ROC is basically in between these two these two pole minus b and plus b this was our first pole and this is the second pole so the last two properties are rather straightforward it says that if the Laplace transform x of s of x of t is rational then its ROC is bounded by pole or extends to infinity in addition no poles of x of s are contained in the ROC so this is something that we have already discussed that poles are not included in the region of convergence so in the s plane if we have this pole so we could have this ROC or let's say we have two poles or possibly we can have this ROC for a left sided this was for the right sided signal this is for the left sided signal or we can have a double sided time event signal and we have a strip uh, in the S plane as for the case of this signal which was double sided so ROC is bounded by poles or it extends to infinity so the last property says that if the Laplace transform x of s of x of t is rational that is it is in terms of fraction numerator by denominator then if x of t is right sided the ROC is a region in the s plane to the right of the rightmost pole again for right sided signal if we have multiple poles so the rightmost pole would de determine the boundary of ROC and if x of t is left sided the ROC is the region in the s plane to the left of the leftmost pole for example this case left of the left, uh, leftmost pole so these are the eight properties that help us understand Laplace transform and its convergence